A robotic football championship is coming to campus. And two fraternities and a sorority are hosting philanthropy events this weekend. And the rain moves out and the sun comes in. I'm John Williams on weather. We have that and more in this edition of 15 News at 5 starts now. More this edition of 15 News at 5. Of 15 News at 5. 15 News at 5. 15 News at 5 starts right now. Thank you for joining us this evening on 15 News at 5. I'm Colton Woods. And I'm Mason Gleva. Are you interested in watching football unlike no other? Then come to the 11th Annual Collegiate Robotic Football Conference National Championship this Saturday, April 13th at The Arc. The event is free and open to the public for the last two consecutive years. Valpo's robotics team has reigned supreme winning the past two consecutive titles against their rival Notre Dame. Valpo received the bid to bring the championship to Valpo's campus for the first time ever for the 2024 championship. Valpo Robotics have their hopes set on winning yet another title, this time in front of their home crowd. Using newly updated PlayStation 5 controllers, the robotics team will try to maneuver their robots around a game of football while touchdowns and field goals receive the most points. Points will also be awarded for successful passes and catches. The doors will open at 9 a.m. with the first game beginning at 9.30 with Kelvin University facing off against the U.S. Naval Academy. The second game will start at 11 where Valpo will take on Ohio Northern University. The winner of the first game will face off against Notre Dame at 1 p.m. The winners from the games 2 and 3 will face off in the national championship game at 4. A bronze match will additionally be played in between at 2.15. The winning team will be presented with a the, the Brian Henderman Trophy at the awards ceremony at 5.30. Be sure to come on down and cheer on your Valpo Robotics football team. Kappa Kappa Gamma and Pi Kappa, Pi Kappa Alpha, wow, are holding an event called Extinguish the Stigma. The goal of this event is to raise awareness and money for the mental health of young adults and first responders. During the event, teams will compete in physical and mental challenges to achieve the best time and bring home a trophy. This event will happen on Saturday, April 13th from 11 to 2 on the East Lawn. If you would like to donate or have any questions, you can go to kkg.crowdchange.com. Lamba Chi Alpha is also holding an event called Hopeful Tales Animal Rescue. This event starts at 11 and goes until 1.30. The event entails walking dogs from the Hopeful Tales Animal Rescue around campus. The dogs will be stopping at eight different locations, with the first stop being at being the West Lawn, the second Guild Memorial, the third at the end of Mound Street, fourth is at the Victory Bell, fifth at the intersection between Lank and Alumni Halls, sixth is by Werenberg Hall, the seventh is outside the center of the arch, and the eighth stop is at the historic Student Bridge. You are welcome to bring your dogs if you have any. Questions, comments, or concerns, you can email those to lca.philanthropy at valpo.edu. This past Monday, the U.S. experienced a total solar eclipse. Sebastian Zenowicz has more. Absolutely stunning. Oh, my. So you said we could see one planet. I see it right there in the yep. sky. Can we see <laughs> any others as we're looking up? It was the moment that captured the hearts of millions across the world as Monday's total solar eclipse cast its shadow of darkness across the U.S. Those in the path of totality all gathered together with their eclipse glasses ready to witness this breathtaking event. Before Monday, the previous eclipse that occurred in the U.S. was back in August of 2017, where the path of totality was completely in the opposite direction compared to this year. It was also recorded that the path of totality when entering the U.S. was approximately 120 miles wide, compared to only 60 to 70 miles in 2017. Chicago and northwest Indiana were not in the full path of totality again this year. However, it was expected that us here in Valpo would experience about 90 to 95 percent of totality, which is just enough for the sky to dim slightly and witness the moon partially cover the sun. The experience was unlike any other for those viewing a solar eclipse for the very first time ever. Saluki Stadium on the campus of Southern Illinois in Carbondale completely sold out when 15,000 people packed the stands waiting for the big moment. What an incredible sensation and you are hearing and 
and seeing the crowd of 15,000 gathered here at Southern Illinois University. Oh, Albert, there it is, incredible. Bailey Deeds, Bailey Deeds, and we're about to see the diamond ring effect and about to have the total solar eclipse here in Carbondale, Illinois, on campus of Southern Illinois University. A big crowd of people gathered together at Clyde Warren Park in Dallas to witness the beauty ahead. WGN welcomed back former meteorologist Tom Skilling from his recent retirement to witness the event at a campsite in Maconda, Illinois, just five hours south of Chicago. People were ready to see Skilling shed those tears once again, just like he did back in 2017. I'll tell you, there. Just, oh, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did it! <laughs> NASA predicts that the next total solar eclipse that will occur in the U.S. won't be until August of 2044, which is a full 20 years from now. This always reminds us of how special and emotional a solar eclipse can be. Whether it's the beautiful flare of the sun's corona peeking out from behind the moon, or the ability to see planets in our solar system from far away from the light refraction, the 2024 solar eclipse will go down in space weather history, and it only begs the question, what will the next solar eclipse have in store for us next? For VUTV, I'm Sebastian Zenowitz. We have 15 Weathers' John Williams in the studio. So John, how is this weekend looking? This weekend is looking much better compared to the weather that we have right now. Looking at our weather headlines, the rain is expected to move out. You mentioned the weekend. We are expecting a beautiful weekend, and oh, it warms my heart to say this, but we do have some 70s coming up ahead. As we look at our current temperature, actually, yeah, sorry. As we look at our current temperatures, 48 here in Valpo, 50 Gary, 50 here, down in Joliet, 60, down in Kankakee, 57, and down in Rensselaer, 52. As we take a more regional look at just this mess of a weather that we have been in. You can see the light to moderate rain really starting to move out. It's been more so a part of this low pressure system. And with this low pressure system moving out, we do have the clearing skies and the beautiful weekend. And I'll have more of that coming up soon. Thanks, John. Coming up, we'll take a look at your Valpo Sports. But first, celebrate your pets on National Pets Day. Tax day is less than a week away and many Americans are getting or, soon, or will soon get a refund. And the IRS is warning taxpayers to be on alert for scams. Experts say technology is making it easier for people to get tricked. Jen Sullivan has tips on how to protect yourself in today's consumer watch. It's the time of year where Americans are filing their taxes and waiting for a possible refund and scammers are seizing on an opportunity to make some money of their own. The IRS is warning taxpayers to watch out for fake letters asking recipients to provide personal information to receive an unclaimed refund. These letters even have the IRS letterhead to make them look legitimate. When those bad actors borrow the name and the, the legitimacy of that government agency, we tend to trust that, and especially when you're talking about the IRS. Eva Velasquez is the president and CEO of Identity Theft Resource Center, a nonprofit that provides resources to victims of scams. She says advancing technologies like AI is making it easier for fraudsters to target people. They are getting much more sophisticated. The amount of money lost to scams have gone up 14% in the last year, according to recent data from the Federal Trade Commission. 2.6 million people reported being scammed, with consumers losing more than $10 billion. People are being lied to and they believe those lies because of the, the limited amount of experience that we have. The IRS says they'll never contact taxpayers by email, text, or through social media for a bill or tax refund. 
If you do get a letter in the mail, double check the phone number and make sure it matches the number on the IRS.gov website. And if you do think you've become a victim of a scam, report it to authorities, including the IRS or law enforcement or the Federal Trade Commission. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. In less than a week, thousands of runners from all over the world will be in Boston for the 128th Boston Marathon, including a Ver Vermont woman with brain cancer who is fulfilling a lifelong bu bucket list goal. Lauren Granada talks to this brave woman who has a message for us all. Watching Mary Williams lace up her running shoes, she looks like a strong, healthy athlete ready to run miles on end. But sometimes, the outside doesn't always reflect what's happening on the inside. Some days, like, I mean, I mean, my stomach just feels raw. Or there's a lot of fatigue. Or sometimes just dizziness. I've dealt with vertigo. Training for the Boston yeah. Marathon is hard well, enough. Life and but Mary is doing it with brain cancer. So I have grade 2 oligodendroglioma. Is the type of cancer. When Mary was diagnosed two years ago, her doctor told her she had 10 years left to live. It was like, um, you know, all these feelings of like, this is unfair, and my mom had died a year, a year prior to that, which was really hard to, to deal with. Then I think after the initial shock, the next day I had the, the feeling like, well, at least I have to make it. With a glass half full mentality, Mary created a bucket list. This April 15th, she'll check off number one on the list to run the world's oldest annual marathon. Boston is something I've always wanted to do, but just because I was focused on other things, it just didn't happen. Mary will be a part of the adaptive program, running alongside her coach and boyfriend, Eric. She's also running for charity with the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, where she's receiving treatment. It is truly inspiring just to see the, the support that runners such as Mary and our whole team receive from their communities. Runners with the Dana-Farber Marathon Challenge have a fundraising commitment of $10,000. Mary's goal is to raise 26.2 thousand, and she's almost there. I have so much gratitude for all of the support that I've had with my friends and my family, with my coworkers, and there's just been a lot of people rallying behind me. Taking life one stride at a time and living like each day is her last. You may feel the best you feel today than you would tomorrow, so just don't wait and don't waste your life. Again, the Boston Marathon takes place on Monday. We love our pets every day, but doing so is especially important on Thursday because it's National Pet Day. Observed every year on April 11th, National Pet Day is dedicated to pets who may not be getting the attention and companionship they deserve. We're talking about orphan pets, whether their owners have passed away or are ill. So take a moment and look for a chance to help out an orphan pet. Coming up after the break, John Williams will have a look at your full forecast. After that, we'll take a look at this past week's Beacon Sports. So as I was discussing earlier about the 70s, as we look heading into Saturday morning to start off, it's still going to be pretty cool across our area. 39 here in Valpo, 40 in Gary, 39 in Chicago, 38 in Romeoville. We do warm up quite a bit as we advance more into the day Saturday. This is at 6 p.m. Still really in the lower 60s, 63 in Valpo, 64 Lansing, 64 Chicago, 65 Romeoville. I promise you 70s and I will deliver it to you, just stick with me. 52 here in Valpo, 53 in Lansing, 52 Gary, 53 Chicago, so an even warmer Sunday morning than compared to our Saturday morning. And then I promised and I delivered. 73 here in Valpo, 72 in Chicago O'Hare, 74 over in Joliet, 74 in Romeoville. And that'll be the pattern once we get to Saturday for the next couple of days, really just sticking to those 70s. 
as we look at our future radar, this is heading into tonight. You can see a break up in the clouds, but over in our western suburbs, some light to moderate rain, nothing in terms of severe weather expected. And then as we head into the overnight, this is early Friday morning. You see some showers move through our area and still some light to moderate showers across the western suburbs. And then going more so into tomorrow morning, that's when we could get again some more light to moderate rain, but again, nothing on the severe side and nothing too accumulating. Definitely less rain tomorrow compared to today. Once we really hit the late morning, still overcast skies, but our western suburbs start to get out of that cloudiness. The rain should be outside of um, south, the South Bend area. The rain should be out of our viewing area for the most part. And then you see 12:30 p.m on Friday afternoon. You see basically half of our region is in the sun, our other half is in the clouds. And then really once we reach late Friday afternoon, sunny skies are expected to return. We take a more national look at things. You can see 57 in Chicago, 68 St. Louis, in the city that refuses to go below the 80s, 86 in Miami, 56 in New York, 59 all the way over here in Los Angeles. 82 here in El Paso, and then 60 in Denver. Later on, I will have a look as, as we look at our um, full seven-day forecast. Back to you guys. Thanks, John. It's nice to see that we have some warmer weather coming up after all of the gloom we've had the past day or so. Um, but after the break, we will see what went down in Valpo Sports this past week. The Valpo men's baseball team has had a tough month of April thus far, as they have lost all of their games so far this month. The Beacons had their games from the 3rd and the 5th canceled, so their first April game was on April 5th. On that day, the Beacons lost to Illinois State 11-1. to The Beacons played Illinois State against the past, this past Saturday and lost 3-1. to The Beacons played Illinois State the following day and lost 6-0. to The Beacons were on the road for all three of these games, and the Beacons played Milwaukee this past Tuesday and lost 7 to 3. The Beacons are 10 to 20 on the season. The Beacons will play at home versus Belmont tomorrow night at 3 p.m. at home. The Valpo women's softball team has had a tough couple of games, losing three of their last four. The Beacons played a double header this past Saturday at home against the visiting Belmont Bruins. Val Valpo won the first game 4 to 2, but then lost the second game 12 to 1. The Beacons lost again to Belmont this past Sunday, 8-2. The Beacons then lost to UIC, 2-1, this past Tuesday at home. The Beacons are 8-23 on the season. The Beacons also play Illinois State on the road this Friday. We wish all of the best of luck to our men's baseball team and our women's softball team. College basketball star Caitlin Clark closed out her college career when the Iowa, Haw I Iowa Hawkeyes took on the undefeated South Carolina Gamecocks last Sunday at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland. Both teams were ranked as the number one seed this year going into the tournament. Clark wasted no time to get behind the three-point line for her final college game as the Hawkeyes maintained the lead in the first half. Clark put up a big bucket several feet behind the three-point arc just in the first quarter. All was looking up for Clark and the Hawkeyes to win the national championship, but the Gamecocks stayed alive and would eventually take the lead over the Hawkeyes in the second half. The Gamecocks finished this year and went home with the national championship win with a perfect season and a final record of 38-0. The final score was 87-75. to Clark scored 30 points in that game, and Tessa Johnson was the leading scorer for the Gamecocks with 19 points. Clark spoke about her thoughts on the game as well as her impact on the women's college basketball at a, this press conference. I'm just proud of our group. We, you know, we never back down, and um, you know, we gave it everything we got. I think for me, is just the emotions will probably hit me over the next couple of days, and I don't have much time to, you know, sit around and sulk and be upset. And I don't think that's what I'm about either. Is you know. Yeah, I'm sad we lost this game, but I'm also so proud of myself. I'm so proud of my teammates. I'm so proud of this program. Um, there's a lot to be proud of, but, you know, there's going to be tears. It is sad that this is all over, and this is the last time I'm going to put on an Iowa jersey. So when I think about women's basketball going forward, you know, 
obviously it's just going to continue to grow, whether it's at the WNBA level, whether it's at the college level. Like, everybody sees it. Everybody knows. Everybody sees the viewership numbers. Um, when you're given an opportunity, women's sports just kind of thrives. And I think that's been the coolest part for me on this journey is just, you know, we start our season playing in front of 55,000 people in, in Kinnick Stadium. And now we're ending it probably playing in front of 15 million people or more on TV. Um, you know, it just continues to get better and better and better. And um, that's never going to stop. You know, when you continue to give them the platform, like this, things like this are just going to continue to to happen. Back in March, Clark announced on social media that she has declared for the WNBA draft this year, which happens next week on the 15th. The Indiana Fever will have the first pick in the first round this year. Clark also received the 48th annual John R. Wooden Award this week on April 8th. This is her second Wooden Award win in her career. I was a little disappointed that Caitlin Clark didn't win the national title in her final season there at Iowa. But congratulations to South Carolina. They just kind of mowed everybody over all, all year long. And then UConn repeated on the men's side for the men's tournament, taking care of Purdue. So. Coming up, John will have a final look at your seven-day forecast. So as we head into the weekend, the clouds will be clearing out and so will be the rain. And as we head into Saturday and Sunday, again, those 70s do make their return and it is shaping up to be a beautiful weekend. We will have to look towards early next week, particularly Tuesday. If we are going to have a severe weather threat, it would be on that day, but we'll keep you updated on that. Not too bad of a forecast by spring standards at all. No. Thanks, John. I have a question for you. <laughs> What is your favorite springtime activity? Probably playing basketball outside. There's just nothing like it, especially when you get the sunset, especially if you hit a game-winning shot that I, you know, <laughs> I, I have a history of making those, so not to toot my own horn, but there's nothing better than that. Yeah, mine's probably going for a hike at the dunes. I would probably have to go with beach volleyball, especially outside of Brant or by the fitness center. It's pretty nice. fun. From all of us at VUTV, thank you for joining us this evening.